This is the Weather Extreme video. This is for Thursday the 16th. I'm James Spann, and by golly, the weather tour rolls along tonight. We're coming to Pleasant Grove. We'll be at Pleasant Grove High School. The show begins at 6.30. And, of course, uh, so many of our suburbs in the Birmingham metro were devastated by that big EF4, Concord, Pleasant Grove, Pratt City. Uh, much to talk about, many stories to share, very powerful stuff. We hope to see you there. We'll have the memorial there to all of those that died. The death toll on that day, April 27th, was 252. Just remarkable. All right, let's look out the window this morning. Hey, the rain is gone pretty early, moving out ahead of schedule. That's the uh, Gadsden sky cam. The clouds linger, but the rain is gone. There's a look at downtown Fayette up in northwest Alabama and down to the south. The look at downtown Clanton in Chilton County. Temperature is very consistent across the board, mostly 50s around here, mostly low and mid-50s. Birmingham 54, the warm spot, Montgomery, they've got 61. And you know, when you start the day at 61, it's going to be pretty warm later. We're expecting highs around 70 today. All right, there's the water vapor satellite imagery. This uh, short wave is kicking out and dampening. That big upper low is the feature to watch. Over uh, far southern California, and that's going to be spinning up a Gulf of Mexico low as the weekend begins. Temperatures around the nation. It's cold out west, but not really that cold for this time of the year. And, of course, here in the southeast, we're very mild. There's the watch warning map. Pretty quiet around the nation. Uh, some dense fog issues to the west, and uh, really that's about it. But this is what we'll be watching. This is the day three convective outlook. Uh, SPC has defined the standard slight risk of severe weather for about the southern half of Alabama and uh, some of the adjacent states. And I really think that the better chance of any severe weather on Saturday will be closer to the Gulf Coast. Uh, it depends on the track of the surface low, and we'll talk about that as we go. And here's the rain for the next five days. Now, this started last night at 6, so this counts the rain from last night and the rain we get on Saturday. And this is suggesting maybe some two-inch amounts, but it's a really sharp gradient there. Uh, from about Interstate 59 South, that's the heaviest rain. As you go farther north, the rain should be lighter up near the Tennessee Valley. All right, model fans, this is the 06E GFS at noon today at 500 millibars. The way things look, about 18,000 feet off the ground. We'll watch that upper low that's over the northern Gulf of California. Down below that, the model is obviously... Uh, a little slow on moving the rain out. The rain is already gone here at 5 o'clock this morning. In fact, there's the uh, radar, and you can see it's all south and east of Montgomery. So a very mild day today, spring-like, a chance the sun breaks out later today with low 70s possible. Tomorrow looks good. Thickness values are down a little bit. Highs dropping in the mid-60s, but you can see already rain to the west. And here's the deal. This is Saturday. The uh, wave that was over the Gulf of California is over Texas, and down below that, a surface low is forming around the mouth of the Mississippi River, 1,008 millibars. And any, you know, severe weather will be, you know, near south and east of that surface low, not north of the surface low. But clearly, our rain should be moving in Saturday morning. We'll go to Saturday night at midnight. The surface low is near Roanoke. And again, this would suggest the severe weather threat would be really south and east of that or over southeast Alabama. Uh, Troy, Eufaula, Dothan, Geneva, Andalusia, places like that. That's the greatest chance of severe weather. Up here, just a good soaking rain Saturday night. That's a really good rain producer. I think we need to up the rain to one to two inches this weekend. And then Sunday, the thing is off the Atlantic coast. And again, all of a sudden, our snow is back on the board for interior parts of Virginia and West Virginia. It could be a big snow over there. We'll keep an eye on that for our friends there. But around here, Sunday should be cooler in a dry day, highs drop into the uh, upper 40s and low 50s, the sky becoming partly to mostly sunny by afternoon. Kind of breezy. We'll pick up the severe weather parameters. This is the instability Saturday night at midnight, just to show you there's no instability up here. So that's the reason I don't think we have any severe weather. And again, we're north of the surface low. Of course, shear values are awfully high, which you expect. But again, that's just not a severe weather look. All right, this is Monday of next week. Dry and pleasant. That would be upper 50s, right where we ought to be for this time of the year. Tuesday, we stay dry with mid-60s. And Wednesday, got some energy that's not phased up, but uh, that will bring the next chance of rain. This is not as aggressive as some other runs, and that rain could linger into Thursday as the front just kind of eases through here. So middle part of next week could be wet. We'll check the end of the forecast on March 2nd, and that is not a cold look for us. Big upper low uh, west of San Francisco, the uh, 
north, the northern part of the jet stream is way north of here, and we're very mild if this is right. And there's the NAO. You know, it just wants to kiss that neutral line and come back positive. So, again, no sign of the pattern change yet, but we'll be watching. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. Due to the travel schedule with the storm show tonight, we're not going to be able to crank out an afternoon video. The next video will be tomorrow morning here. And if you live around here, catch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 4, 5, 6, and 10. And again, we hope to see you tonight at Pleasant Grove. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren. You cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.